one of the hardest things has been to make sure I stay in my lane, like know my brand, know my customers. And there are times where I'm going, oh, that's cool. I like that. And sort of French style. But then I'm like, actually, no, like that, that isn't right. It's not, you know, I'm not just going to jump on that trend because it's not right for Aurelie. I always have to think, you know, I've got a kind of a checklist of things that I tick off. And literally, you know, going on the Eurostar, I have written down and written that checklist and basically the pieces that I choose have to meet that criteria otherwise it doesn't make the cut welcoming back onto the podcast (laughs) the real life Emily in Paris Lucy from Orly, the French brand, the authentic and affordable, effortlessly chic French brand. She's amazing. She's coming on to talk to me today about French style and to update us on how she's doing. So welcome back onto the podcast, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me again. It's so lovely to see you again. So, but I, do you know what the reason, the reason you popped back into my uh, atmosphere, I mean, I, obviously I follow you and everything on Instagram and I've got your clothes in my wardrobe, but I was having, I had a good friend round for dinner, my friend Sophie, and she was like, God, thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much for introducing mm. me to this brand orally because she is now an absolute, you know, totally loyal customer of yours because she she said it's just literally perfectly my style she's five foot two Sophie maybe five foot one she's quite petite she loves that kind of classic no fuss but really pulled together look and she said whenever she gets a package from you she gets like this gorgeous handwritten note inside and she just absolutely loves the personal touch she she honestly I can't tell you Lucy how moved and touched she was by that Oh, yeah, well, I, I literally personally handwrite all of those note cards. Um, and, you know, I, I know when people repeat by and I'll say thank you so much for shopping again or maybe say something about like, I hope the weather's going to be good to wear it. So, um, yeah, it's it's part of the brand ethos. One, to give it a feeling that y- you really are getting me. Um, it's, it's my choices when I'm, you know, going out and I'm purchasing pieces in Paris. Um, you know, it's me that's wrapping up the orders. Um, I sometimes have a little bit of help, but, you know, predominantly the whole brand is me and here I am um I don't know if anyone can see this um no they can't because it's podcast isn't it but um, <laughs> I'm putting it on YouTube so they will okay, go to anyone so on YouTube, on YouTube. You can see that I'm literally here with all the clothing behind me but yeah it's um that's such lovely feedback to hear um that you know that customers are talking about it because that's the thing I, I think I've grown because people talk about it so it's kind of like a little insider secret um and I want to keep it that way you know I'm not trying to be a big brand and you know I want to stay in my own lane and be this little secret fashion brand but the thing is it's so special she felt so special like just getting that little package wrapped up beautifully with a little handwritten note and she said she just said I don't want to shop in the big stores I don't want this fast throwaway fashion anymore she wants something that feels a bit special that is a bit different to what everyone else is wearing you know and you know let's let's face it as well we are all obsessed with French yeah and I introduced you as the as the real life Emily in Paris I love saying that because we talked about this last time on the podcast can you give us a bit of background about why why I'm introducing you as that? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really funny when Emily in Paris came out on Netflix because I, I watched it and I've got some other girlfriends from my time when I was in Paris. We watched it be like, oh my goodness, that's so true. Um, anyway, so I lived in Paris between 2008 to 2010. Um, I worked with a fashion PR agency. So it wasn't straight marketing like Emily across lots of brands. It was predominantly fashion and sort of high-end fashion. So uh, brands included Chloe, Givenchy, Balmain, Alexander McQueen, Isabel Moran, loads and loads of, you know, gorgeous brands. Um, so working on the shows, 
um, you know, to having, you know, Karen Rockfield or Emmanuel Alt from Vogue at the time come in for appointments. Um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, an amazing experience. And I met my, one of my best friends, um, who was a fashion journalist who was also living in Paris in the time out there. And, um, we sort of became friends because we were two English girls in Paris. And in fact, she was writing for Marie Claire as an English girl in Paris. Um, I don't right. know if it's still online, but yeah, you know, we had a blast and it was such fun. And um, obviously I learned a lot about you know, French style and French, fa- French fashion when I was out there. And uh, I mean, I was fairly young. I think I was about 22 at the time. I'd just graduated. The irony is it was 2008 and I couldn't get a job in London because of the crash, um, the financial crash at the time. But I did manage to get a job in Paris. Um, And obviously because Brexit hadn't happened, I could easily go across the channel and and go. Um, So I thank my lucky stars. I had the most amazing experience. What an amazing experience. And is, is this kind of what has... That was the start, really, of this of your brand. Now, is that something that you you thought about then, or is this something that you thought about a bit later? Well, funnily enough, actually, whilst I was there, um, I did set up a very small business, um, which is one of my first ever businesses. I've always been fairly entrepreneurial. I come from an entrepreneurial family, and um, I, I called it concierge de mode, so concierge of fashion, and it was about the kind of fashionable lifestyle in Paris. So whether that was like little shops or um, restaurants, hotels, and I gained quite a few clients um, from America and Brazil. And I would just basically organize them little trips in Paris and give them the fashionable lifestyle because, you know, um, I was learning, you know, where were the cool places to go out for dinner, you know, where were the great vintage shops, that sort of thing. So I guess in a way, Orly actually started way before it actually started. So that was like my yeah. first take on it. Um, yeah, I, do, I guess we didn't discuss that last time. But um, yeah, little little insight for you there. You didn't. Yeah. So it was all part part of your journey, isn't it? Mm. So you sort of, you know, things lead on to the next thing. I mean, you know, French style epitomizes effortless style and we all aspire to look pulled together, but not to try hard. And before we kind of came on to this you know, record hit record today. Yeah. We were talking about not wanting to look too try hard. Not have a look that's overwhelming and be too kind of out there fashion, you know, just super, super trendy. What we want is to look pulled together. And yeah. I think, you know, the French just they just do it effortlessly. They do it brilliantly. What is the difference between the French and the and the British style? They get it right because it's timeless. They don't follow trends, I would say is the the key takeout. Um, you know, they're not trend driven um you know you can sort of season after season in the kind of what i would call the core french sort of high-end high street brands for them like sandro mage you know claudie pielu they basically have the same piece just slightly different each season so there might be a twist on it so maybe it'd be a different type of button or lace instead of a ruffle or there'll be a slight tweak on it but essentially the core look and ethos and designs are the same and they just sort of do newer versions of them so you know if you were looking at bash which is more what i would call the um bubble look which is the bourgeois bohemian look um you know it's it's very relaxed there's a lot of eye cap prints especially in the summer you know then you've got sandro which is a lot more polished and chic but again it's the same sort of style season after season after season just slightly elevated or slightly changed and i think that's the biggest difference whereas uk you know fast fashion brands um or high end high street brands you know they do go with the trends and they push out the trends and it's trend 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 but the problem with that for me is that you know you then have to keep uh, you know up with that trend and then if you wear it a year or two later you're like oh yeah you know that i remember wearing that or it feels dated whereas French style um, is, you know, the opposite of that. Um, I actually have a piece in my wardrobe. Um, it's from the 1950s. It was my great grandmother's, and it's a little, yeah, uh, navy, quite cropped little jacket by Lanvin, which obviously is a beautiful, 
designer uh, French brand. And it's got little gold buttons and no joke, it looks as good today as it probably did on my great grandmother in the 1950s. And wow. it's just absolutely timeless. And, you know, I hope to pass that down onto my daughter. And that's another key thing I think is French pieces last. Um, yes. you know, they're worn to be last. And that's what's really important to me when I'm sourcing for Orly as well. Um, but yeah, I would say, yeah, I, I get another thing is maybe bright, bold colors. You know, there's definitely a muted palette color when it comes to French style, you know, um, English style is definitely a lot more, you know, bright colours. And, you know, I love it when I see my friends in really bright colours. For me, obviously, I'm so attracted to the French style that, you know, I kind of don't steer away from it um, and it suits my colouring. But, you know, it it can look great when people are in bright colours. Yeah, it does. I was actually, I've just had a post this morning, Lucy. I always go off on a tangent on um, LinkedIn about Penelope Bridgerton and her, are you watching Oh, yes, I am, yeah. So her transition from... The, the wallflower or the one that everyone ignored and she was mm-hmm. you know that, her family the Featheringtons wear quite sort of gaudy bright colours and they have sort of quite sort of um, really bright hair colours and they're a little bit sort of tacky yeah. and all of that aren't they and then she yeah. transitions into she she's suddenly sick of it and she wants to be noticed and she wants yeah. to be the elegant lady she wants to you know she's even she's ignoring Colin at that point still but you know she transitions into the pastel kind of blues like the Bridgertons mm. wear she has her hair sort of more loose and just becomes a lot more elegant. And I'm not saying if you wear bright colours, you, yeah. you, know, you don't look. In fact, actually, was- I think she even referenced in that that she wanted to look like the women in Paris because obviously Colin had just oh, come back yes. from Paris. That's so, so true. Yeah, she even referenced that she wanted to, you know, have dresses like the ladies in Paris. And obviously at that point it was the Belle Epoque kind of period. Yeah, she, she said, she said, um, I don't want to see another citrus colour as long as I live. I think that's what she said when she was in the atelier, I guess, having her yeah. glow up, her transition. And it's just, it's interesting how your clothes sort of tell a story about you and you evolve through time. You know, what I want to wear now I didn't want to wear a few years ago. I've definitely, I'm making a conscious effort to to look a bit more pulled together because I'm actually yeah. naturally a very relaxed dresser. And I don't, you know, you get people who say, oh, it doesn't matter what you wear. You can just, you know, you can just rock up yeah. in your jogging bottoms and it doesn't, and a creased t-shirt, it doesn't matter. But it really does. Yeah, I think that's you know? how you want to feel. Like, I, I think there's some great brands on the British High Street that do that really well. Like, I think Hush does the relaxed yet slightly pulled together look you know really really well um and I think that's yeah. it's like it, it I think as you say like it's how you want to feel and you know clothes can really make you feel better you know I'm I'm finding you know I've got a lot of mum friends my daughter's five and you know a lot will sort of say to me god I feel so much better when I actually get dressed you know there's a lot of sweaty betty vile loving ladies and that's great and I, I actually think those brands are good because you can still wear the you know the the leggings and the sweat top and kind of feel cool and put together even though you're actually technically in gym wear um so yeah it, I think it depends yeah how you feel and and how you want to present yourself yeah there are higher end athleisure athleisure brands mm. out there now for peak, but I would not be happy wearing, you know, the stuff I go to the gym in, even if it's high end, because I wouldn't feel <laughs> like quite. I would feel. I don't know. I think it would drag me down. I just think. Yeah. I just feel so much nicer if I've got the gorgeous blouse you're wearing today, Lucy, with the frill. Thank you. You know that just adds something yeah. to your look I mean it's not like you look formal you look still relaxed and perfectly yeah. appropriate for the day and you're you know the day ahead you're not you don't look like you're going to an office but because it's got that lovely frill it's just adding something to your look that levels you up I think makes you feel yeah a bit it just makes it feel like a little bit more elevated um and a bit different yeah, yeah I, they call this like a little pie crust collar um in terms of of technicality because obviously it sort of looks like a pie crest um that's that's kind of a staple of of french style when you're adding some detailing um but yeah no no i agree with you i mean like i like to run quite a lot and you know i do pilates and stuff so i have my workout wear for my workouts and then i like to get dressed but you know um yeah i think it depends how you want to feel and um yeah i think the french way of dressing is just something that i'm definitely drawn to but don't get me wrong i definitely you know didn't always dress the French way definitely didn't no 
but we but that's it but that's the beauty of it we all evolve I mean yeah. you know if I you know that's the thing and you know I want my wardrobe like Penelope Featherington in Bridgerton you know she's in season three of her life what yeah. season are you in you know in your story yeah, kind of so thing true. and well, I do have think the decades change that you know like I how I dressed in my teens and my very early 20s before I got to Paris was very different to now I probably say it's it's still evolving but within a channel <laughs> and, a, and a very yes. French style channel but um you know depending on your hemlines and that sort of thing you know as you're getting older like I'm just about to turn 40 so you know um I don't mind a mini or some shorts but I'm definitely conscious that I should probably wear more midis <laughs> um yeah. I mean, that's a feeling again, isn't it? So I was yeah. talking on the podcast yesterday or last week about, about this as well. You know, I don't, well, I mean, I still wear short skirts and I'm yeah. 50, but, Amazing. you know, I, but I, I do I because my, I've, my legs are still good, right? Yeah. If, and I feel confident get, getting them out. I'm happy with my legs. But, you know, if you feel conscious about certain parts of your body, it should just be a feeling, not because you're told by the media or whatever that you can't wear something exactly a hundred percent yeah and I think that's the thing I think our British media you know take Daily Mail online how they berate you know celebrities you know wearing this that and the other and it's it's just not on and actually you don't get that in France um you know French women typically do wear I mean they'll they'll wear minis up till their 70s you know to be fair some of them have fabulous pins and can get away with it um but you know they they dress for their body type and I think that's one of the key things of French style and French dressing is that you women tend to know their body types um you know and you get all shapes and sizes of French women you know yes you do get the very slender petite women but you know you do get other shapes as well and that's the thing it's all about dressing for your best features so that you feel you're most confident and I think that's what I love the most about French fu- fashion and French style specifically and obviously then orally in itself like you know I've got ladies that email me and be like oh my god your jeans have changed my life I've never been able to have a pair of jeans that have made me feel this good thank you thank you thank you you know and that I the empowering that I can hopefully give to women who buy clothes safe morally you know to make them feel special you know whether that's you know I've got ladies that have bought dresses for their engagement shoe or you know take the jeans that have made them feel amazing and they've never been able to wear jeans before you know I for me I get a kick out of that like making other women feel good about themselves you know that's yeah I mean really important to me and I'm sure you're that's the same for you in your line of work you know that feeling yeah. of, you know, you've made someone feel special and made them feel good about themselves. I absolutely love that. That's that's the transformation that I see. And I, I it does give me a lot of joy. And it's about personalising a wardrobe, which I think is why when Sophie came around for dinner, she was so excited about Orally and finding uh-huh. a brand. Because she was like, I've just found the perfect brand for me. It just speaks to me. And, you know, uh-huh. you, you say that once you get clients, they mm. stay with you. Yeah, you know, like you say that these jeans that they found, they've been searching for for ages. Let's go on to jeans specifically in a minute because sure. I know a lot of listeners struggle with finding jeans. Just a quick word from me, your host. I'm popping in here to let you know that if you are struggling with your wardrobe, there are lots of services I offer to help with that and you can work directly with me. So if you are opening your wardrobe each day, wondering what to wear, you've got a really important job, you've got job interview, something has changed in your life and your wardrobe doesn't speak to who you are today, take control, get in touch with me. Drop me a DM, I can help with either my online virtual 60 minutes styling session or you can book an in-person service with me if you live in the UK I'll come and edit your wardrobe take you shopping and refresh your wardrobe for the coming years and so it reflects who you are today so just check out my website lisagilbystyle.com now back to the show But it's about, you know, learning about yourself. So, you know, I keep using this this um, analogy about uh, Penelope, but, you know, she in Bridgerton, you know, she's come from one place. It's storytelling through her clothes to now to the woman that she wants to be. And she's controlling the narrative more by using what she wears because she's learned who she is. Yeah. you know, and who she wants to be as well. And that's the same with your wardrobe. If you can sort of look at your wardrobe and 
if it's not speaking to you and if you're hanging on to clothes that are from a past version of you or why do you have these clothes that you're not wearing in the wardrobe get them out take some time to work out what gives you joy you know what is your actual style what are the bits about you that you like Mm. what's your body shape and try and really personalize your wardrobe and don't have your head turned by there's so many influencers out there now and you know like like we say it's it's sort of pushing the trends all the time and it's it's overwhelming yeah and I think you know it's hard I think I mean obviously as a small business owner and you know within clothing um one of the hardest things has been to make sure I stay in my lane like know my brand know my customers and you know there are times where I'm going, oh, that's cool. I like that. And sort of French style. But then I'm like, actually, no, like that, that isn't right. It's not, you know, I'm not just going to jump on that trend because it's not right for Orally. I always have to think, you know, I've got a kind of a checklist of things that I tick off. And literally, you know, going on the Eurostar, I have written down and written that checklist. And basically, the pieces that I choose have to meet that criteria. Otherwise, it doesn't make the cut. So that's sort of how dedicated I am to the look and feel of the brand. Um, you know, it's it's it is hard when trends are being pushed, but at the same time, I feel there is a market for kind of very timeless French style, and you know, it's not for everyone. And that I think that's great. And that's the thing about fashion and clothes in general is you know you do find your own style. And you know, I for example love Rixo dresses. I think they're amazing. They don't suit me at all. It's not my style, but I can really appreciate the brand. I can appreciate the dresses and I love seeing them and other women. But I know my style and I know my figure and I know what works for me. And then likewise, then with Orally, when I'm choosing pieces, you know, I'm making sure does it fit the criteria of what I'm looking for? Because at the end of the day, my core customers, these lovely ladies that keep coming back, um, you know, season after season, they're wanting the look that I'm hopefully providing. It's, I mean, it must be so hard not to, you know, get your head turned by all oh, the trends. And, I mean, no joke. So everyone, everyone that's watching, you know, looking for inspiration on exactly. Instagram. It's it's so hard because, I mean, and also when I'm on those buying trips in Paris, there are over 600 suppliers that I could choose from. Obviously, I've got yeah. cool ones that I like to work with. I'm absolutely meticulous when it comes to quality. And it's, it, I mean, so much so, I don't know if you know, but... um when it comes over from Paris, it actually goes to an external company that um, do quality control checks. It's a company that works with a lot of the high street doing various different things. So, you know, there's other big brands that they work with um, that everyone would know of, um, higher end high street brands. Um, yes. And uh, so when it then arrives with me, I've, you know, if, if someone's got a mark or a fault, you know, because that is typical of the fashion industry when anything is purchased. So, I know that everything I'm sending out is 100% perfect. And if it's not, you know, then it's me going to the quality controllers. So, you know, quality is absolutely integral to what I'm doing. Um, But, yeah, it, it is hard with fast fashion. But I think, yeah, for anyone going on their own personal style journey, it's about just staying in your lane and knowing you. And I think that's why, you know, people like yourself being personal stylists is brilliant because you help sort of channel that um you know and help people find their personal style you know whatever that is and whatever their lifestyle is and what would suit it I think what you're yeah. doing is brilliant and, for that yeah and just make sure that their that their wardrobe is is speaking the same language as they are kind of thing so it's sort of aligning the wardrobe it must be with, so much fun doing that with the person. it's yeah. amazing but also pe- people can't look at themselves objectively either and yeah. you know they sort of get in a style rut and then walk into a shop almost like they've got blinkers on and can't see styles that might work for them but okay get their head turned by dresses to say they see someone in a rixo dress and think i love that i want to wear that but then it might not be their style and that's why it's so important to find out so you can then look at the girl in the rixo dress admire yeah, her like i do but, know it's, but lo- like i always do but know it's not for you yeah. and then you know stick to stick to your lane know what's for you yeah. life is a lot more simple and enjoyable so i was going to ask you um do you have any best sellers or recommended wardrobe staples that that you really have like go to pieces oh, 100% so um 
so for the, since I launched, um, I stopped what I called I called it the Orally jumper, which is a gorgeous Breton jumper with a funnel neck with buttons down one shoulder, and it, it just keeps selling. You know, season after season. Um, you know, I'm I'm not going to to change that as long as I can get hold of it. I will stock it. Um, and I would say that kind of epitomizes the brand, and it's kind of what launched the brand. Um, that jumper, if I'm really honest. Um, so yeah, I definitely say in the in the winter a Breton jumper, and then in the summer a Breton t-shirt um, or a Breton top. Um, again. I always look for things with unique detailing. So the Orly job has the buttons, obviously. And then for the top, I've got a tank, but it's got a scalloped edge. So um, the website's the Margo. And yeah, it's uh, got little scalloped edges along the along here um, at the shoulder. And then again, um, at the waist. Uh, obviously, jeans. Jeans are an absolute French staple. I live in jeans. You know, um, for me, dresses are something I wear for a special occasion or dinner potentially but you know day to day my workhorse uniform is jeans and a top of some form depending on the weather um you know yeah. the climate and um so that was something I was really really wanting to make sure I nailed I didn't launch with jeans because I couldn't find the right suppliers as I am a jeans wearer for me I love brands like Frame, Page, Citizens of Humanity but obviously they come with a serious price tag yeah. um, and I was very aware that you know not everyone would spend 200 250 pounds on a pair of jeans and i wanted the quality to be really really good but for an affordable price point so you know under the 100 pounds mark um yeah and at first i just couldn't find the right suppliers they felt too low end high street um i'm not going to name any names but you can probably guess where i'm talking about um until i came across the most amazing supplier that i've been working with which took me about 18 months to find. So last time we spoke, I don't think I'd found the jean supplier or maybe I'd just, I'm not sure. It was during the pandemic, so probably not. Why um, by now, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't have jeans when we last spoke. Um, but I do now, and I'd probably say jeans are my best sellers. And I stock various different shapes, different washes, because depending on the look you want to achieve or your body shape. And I am absolutely adamant, and I talk about this when I do reels, because I do do try-ons and things, that... Buy jeans for your body shape that suit you. Don't worry about the trends. I know there's a lot of wide leg jeans, for example, at the moment, you know, um, and they're not going to suit everybody, you know. So go with what suits you. Jeans, you can, you know, make them look elevated or make them look um, more contemporary and modern in their look with the top that you pair them with or the shoes that you pair them with. You know, maybe choose one. What I like to do is maybe have a timeless classic look and then maybe use a more like, you know, fresh handbag or the shoes of the season. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of, you know, to just yeah. make it feel like you're more, you know, current. Um, okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so depending on what look you want to go for and, you know, different types of jeans, you can create a completely different look, you know. So, yeah. yeah. I'm a yeah. massive jeans. I'm a jeans lover. I'm wearing the wide leg jeans at the moment. I was going to ask you, do you have a bestseller jean on your website? You've got some gorgeous kick flair, I've noticed. Yeah. High waisted. Yeah. So jeans wise, um, my bestsellers have been the wide crops that I've got. But the reason I think they've been really successful is um, they do have a good amount of stretch in them, but they they cling to the right part of the body. So obviously they're high waisted. They're quite. Um, you know they're quite tight fitting around the kind of your bum and your thighs and then they go out so you 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 still see your figure but you're wearing a wide jean and then obviously because they're cropped you see the ankle which is obviously one of the slimmest parts of your body so they've really really worked for a lot of women because they make you feel neat and pulled together but you're still kind of got that current kind of look and also they're very French yeah. French women wear wide jeans you know it's yeah, but French women wear all types of jeans you know the straight leg jean um is obviously synonymous with you know Jane Birkin um likewise yeah. the boot cut flare like our Lena jeans with the front pockets so yeah I mean jeans are an absolute must and I probably said our boot cuts and our wide jeans um, but then our skinny sell very well, you know. I have a lot of millennial customers, um, and we are still we like skinny, skinny jeans. If, if, if they see 
if they suit you, stick to them. I was going to ask you about your about white jeans. You've talked sure. about white, yeah. but the white because I love a white jean in the summer. I feel like when I put it on, I look more dressed up than when I'm wearing. I do love my bleach denim. I love my dark denim as well. I've got all the shades in my wardrobe, but summertime is for white jeans and it can make, you can wear them to an event or whatever, makes you look a bit dressed up. But what would you, what would you suggest wearing those with? You've got some lovely sort of slightly kick flare white jeans. I do have some um, straight leg ones as well, um, which will be coming back into stock shortly, but the ones that you're talking about, the Sabrina. So yes, obviously the detailing is the brass buttons, which are exposed at the front the high waisted and they've got the sort of slight kick flare to them so I would wear you know a, a simple top like a Breton t-shirt or a you know Bre- the Breton racer that I was talking about um and you know or a simple cami basically with them and then yeah. you can change your look as I was saying before with shoes so you know you could keep it sort of very French and wear a little ballet pump um I think with a little kick, sort of crop kick flare, a little bit of a heel works really, really well. Um, and you can, you know, get ballet pumps that have a little bit of a heel with them. Rouge, which is a great French brand, they do some. Um, or you could do like a slightly strappy sandal. Um, I would maybe put, uh, you could wear a Converse with them because they've kind of got that kind of vintage style with them. I would say a sh- the, the, uh, not a long Converse because you're not going to get the length right. But, you know, the short one that's around the ankle, if you know what I mean. Um, once. Yeah, Him exactly. Or a supergar, yeah. um, you know, that, that sort of style. Um, or the supergar with the platform in it to just give you that little bit of height. Um, yeah. You know, but those jeans are quite good in that um, how I like to wear them, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but um, if you're moving, you can wear them now, obviously, in the summer with a with a sandal or on a cooler day, a ballet flat or a plimsoll. But you can then wear them with knitwear into the sort of autumn you know, yes. early autumn, early winter, and then pair them with a tan boot. And with a tan boot. So I've written down here Margot Breton racer top because when I was looking at your white jeans earlier, I was thinking, what would I wear them with? And I, I earmarked that. So anyone listening, check that out. It's gorgeous. It's, I mean, I would wear that all through the yeah. summer. And also, I've already got your um, floral flurry, br- flurry yeah. blouse. The the blue one, which I wear with white jeans, that's also yeah. really gorgeous. Yeah. I wear all around footwear. I mean, I've I've started wearing ballet flats now because I was tired of trainers. Yeah. I was a bit bored of trainers, so I wanted to switch it up a bit. So I've got leopard print ballet flats from Bowden, which I think look really nice with white jeans. Yeah. And also something I've worn for years, which apparently was out of fashion last year, but I still wore them, is my espadrilles. I love my yeah. wedge espadrilles and I think they look nice with a white jean as they well do. I've got some they do I was going to say like- espadrille I mean yeah again depending on your ankles um I actually really yeah. struggle to wear them um I think I've got quite narrow ankles so like I find with the, the strap up but you can get lots of different types of espadrilles like I'm quite good with a sling back one so espadrilles yeah. but depending on what suits your your foot and ankles <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, exactly because you get the some that I've got the ones that tie around your yeah. ankle um one more thing just on just on your brand as well something that I've tried to do and something that I talk about a lot on the podcast in all, all of my um posts and everything is that if you've got a lot of jackets in your wardrobe you have a lot of outfit choices and I think the French are very good at wearing a jacket and wearing a blazer and that's something I've actively tried it's something that didn't come naturally to me I think because I'm not a classic dresser okay but I really feel it elevated my style yeah I would say that's kind of like one of my ride or die you know items within my wardrobe I have lots of blazers and jackets um and you know from the oversized to the cropped to the boot clay yeah and it's a very very french thing because it just makes you feel really put together and also it's also great as an extra layer um i'd also say the trench coat as well um and if you get the right size you can then wear your trench coat over your jacket or your blazer as in either another layer or you know for days when it is raining but you still want to then get to the office or your lunch or whatever you're doing you know I think a little jacket is great whatever shape or you know color you're going for um to just really lift an outfit and make it look pulled together I would say that's like 
the one thing that will pull you together, definitely. You know, like it's the third hours on, yeah, it's relaxed. It's- soon as I put on a navy blazer with it, it will just look really elegant and really chic and pulled together. It's the third piece of an outfit that makes it into an outfit. That's the thing. I mean, do you have a, a signature style, would you say? So how has it evolved for you over the years, your style? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, as I was saying earlier, like in my early, in my teens, my in my early 20s, I, I mean... I wore things from like Tammy Girl from back in the day, you know, shoestring strap dress with a t-shirt underneath. And do you remember those? Oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to even admit this now. Those awful baggy trousers that had like random tassels coming off them. Oh yeah, like, like it's like a parachute. <laughs> Some of them as well. It's, you know, because I think that Bubbles. in the noughties, we were really inspired by... Um, kind of you know the pop artists you know the really low slung jeans that Britney and Christina wore um we were very inspired let's be honest by pop artists that's kind of what we had um you know so yeah I would say that was that and then obviously then evolved now I'd probably say if I was kind of to give the three words to it you know timeless elegant and effortless so not looking like quite too hard but I like to look quite elegant um and then obviously timeless like for me I don't want to look trendy that's you know definitely not something I want to look like for me personally you know I want to be able to pull something out of my wardrobe now and in 10 years time still love it and I still do I mean I've got evening dresses I've got jackets I've got pieces that I I have worn that I've bought in Paris 10 years ago and I still wear now you know, yeah, so I'm in the like 20s then, and I'm now quite a long time ago, nearly 40. So, you know, there's I've got a beautiful, it's by a brand, brand called, I don't know if you've heard of it, Gat Rimon. I haven't heard of it, okay. no. Uh, anyway, it's a, bit, a small independent, beautiful, and it was a yeah. black blazer with leather cuffs on the sleeve and a black leather lapel. Um, and then likewise, and then a little trim on the black leather trim on the um pockets on the front and obviously it's just so timeless and I still wear it now and it's still lasted yeah I mean I definitely want a few timeless pieces in my wardrobe you know I don't want to be buying I definitely don't want to be buying the fast fashion and I don't want loads of trend pieces in my wardrobe so you know the best way to do it is to just get that understanding of yourself yeah find some brands that you love and stay in your lane so you can admire what other people are wearing but really understand your own style thank you so much for joining me today Lucy. that was a great chat always a great chat with you oh thank you thank you for having me again and what's your website and where can people find you so it's early.co.uk which is a-u-r-e-l-i-e dot co dot uk and um we're online only i'm also on instagram with the same handle at rle.co.uk where i do a few styling reels and you know show different ways that um i'm wearing pieces and what's new um yeah and yeah we're online only amazing i'm going to put the links in the show notes as well thanks so much for joining me today lucy Thank you. Oh my goodness, that was a great episode. A huge thank you to Lucy from Orly, the beautiful French brand, for joining me on the Style Stories podcast this week. She is so great. You can just hear her passion and you can tell she's just this natural entrepreneur, but she cares so, so much about her brand. And the little handwritten notes as well when you order things, it's just much nicer to shop in that more personalised way and to support small businesses. So please do check out Orly if you like French understated beautiful clothes that are going to stand the test of time I'm going to put the link in the show notes below thanks so much for listening if you are enjoying the podcast please do hit the follow button and remember to leave me a review to help me get up the charts so I can keep doing this podcast and I will see you next time